In this week's update from IHME, uh, we are not yet ready to release our models reflecting the spread of the Omicron variant. We expect to do that early next week. Uh, and it's taken time to make sense of uh, the Omicron outbreak. We have finalized our Omicron spread model that reflects airline traffic data and what we've learned of the spread of the Delta variant and then what we've learned through the spread and rapid uh, uptake, uh, replacement of Delta by Omicron in South Africa, the spread from Hauteng province to adjacent provinces, the rapid replacement of Delta in the UK, in London, other parts of the UK, Denmark, Norway, Quebec, and um, in, even here in Washington state. What this information tells us is that Omicron uh, is very, once in a population, replaces Delta in roughly about a two week to three week period, uh, some places even faster than that. So based on that spread and the fact that Omicron has gotten to many countries already, we are expecting that Omicron will be the dominant variant in most places in the world um, by January, and that uh, our preliminary assessment of transmission potential suggests that we will have a very large global epidemic wave from Omicron unfolding on a much faster pace than the Delta wave uh, spread around the world and re probably reaching a peak uh, sometime in January uh, around the Omicron wave. So a very uh, quick process of Omicron spreading rapidly. The biggest issue uh, around Omicron is not whether it uh, has reduced, I mean, perform the, the main vaccines are less effective in preventing uh, infection and somewhat less effective in preventing uh, hospitalization and death. That's pretty clear now from the evidence. Uh, nor we're also pretty clear that there is considerable immune escape so that if you've been previously infected with Delta or other variants, uh, you have a 50% or more chance of being infected with Omicron. The evidence around those two aspects are, is, are, are starting to be reasonably clear, but the one that concerns us the most is just how severe Omicron is. Uh, we're seeing a number of studies coming out of South Africa suggesting it is quite substantially less severe, uh, anywhere from 75% less severe to even 95% less severe. That's a difference on the global scale of a, a huge number of uh, deaths and, and associated hospitalizations. So we are trying to make sense of the available data. We're looking for early signals from the United Kingdom, particularly London, from Norway, and from Denmark, who are sort of, in terms of outside of South Africa, ahead of other places in terms of their Omicron surges. Uh, and you know, the, 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 we have to be careful in interpreting the evidence as it emerges, because in previous waves, there have been two sources of lags in understanding severity. One is the lag in just reporting of hospital data. Even in a country as sophisticated as Norway, there is a three to five day lag in, in the full reporting of hospital admissions data. So that makes it complicates the story. And then we know that transmission, for example, in, an, in the alpha wave and then in the delta wave appeared to first go into younger people with a lower infection hospitalization rate and then spread into the older uh, higher at risk groups so that there can be a lag in hospitalizations of two to three weeks. So the next two weeks will be absolutely critical in clarifying how severe Omicron is. And when we do release our models early next week, we will have two scenarios, one where we take the bulk of the evidence, mostly from South Africa, and say this is what we believe is the most likely level of severity. And then we'll have a scenario towards the higher end of the range of uncertainty that is sort of Omicron is more severe, reflecting our inability at this moment to be sure uh, where the most likely value for, of severity is for Omicron. It means, irrespective, that the world needs to be ready for a very large wave. We expect record case numbers in most places from Omicron. And the, the question of whether hospitals get overwhelmed or when we see a big surge in death really will depend on that severity question.
So despite our uncertainties about severity, uh, what we do know is that boosters make a huge difference to uh, the immune, the, the effectiveness of uh, the immune response. So that uh, somebody that has been vaccinated gets a booster actually for Omicron will go back to having very good protection. So boosters are very important. Uh, high quality mask wearing because Omicron is so transmissible that one should err on the side of a high quality mask that protects you as well as protecting others. So more towards an N95 type mask uh, because we know that healthcare workers who use personal protective equipment, particularly N95 masks, are not at increased risk. So we know that they work in pretty much all circumstances. Uh, so high quality masks. And then of course, for those people that have not been vaccinated, uh, getting vaccinated is a, is a critical part of protecting yourself and your family. On top of that, the things that have worked in the past to reduce transmission will also work for Omicron. So avoiding contact with others uh, is a surefire way to reduce your risk of exposure to Omicron. And until we're sure that it's not, uh, you know, that it's really very mild, it makes a lot of sense to pursue a cautious strategy, uh, particularly over the, the, the coming weeks. So that's our insights so far. Uh, expect more from us uh, early next week.